yeah, you can you can cycle a bolt action rifle pretty quickly. But and, and they've caught on to that because I've seen um, advertising from anti gun folks trying to claim that you know bolt action rifles with a scope and a bipod are sniper rifles. So <laughs> you know we need to ban these sniper rifles. They'll ban everything. They they yeah. like I said, the school wouldn't let me have a padlock. You're going to throw it at somebody. Yeah, well, you can throw a, a rock at somebody. What, do you, what does that mean? Yeah, banning things is a weird... Man, this, it is this, a weird conversation because you don't want to give people depleted uranium bullets. Well, that's where things get interesting because when we, we were talking about gun control stuff a few weeks ago. We had Luke, and Luke loves guns. And I was talking about in you know urban versus rural issues, and I said, what if you're in, say, New York, and you live in one of these concrete cubicles stacked on top of some other people in, in a place that smells like sour milk? And, you know, somebody breaks into your apartment and you've got, uh, you know, an AR-15 with maybe like a 308 or something. If you shoot that, it's going to go through. It's going to penetrate. And you've got tons of people living around you. And Luke immediately and instinctively said, then maybe we don't allow certain calibers. Like, ah, there it is. (laughs) Gun control. Telling people they can't have certain weapons because of the caliber of bullet. It is a challenge. I think, I, you know, it was funny because one of the reasons I liked Bernie Sanders years ago was when he was asked about gun control, being from Vermont, where people love their guns, he said it's an urban versus rural issue. He's right. If you live in a tiny concrete cubicle with paper thin walls and you can hear your neighbors banging, you're going to be like, I'm pretty glad they, they don't have guns because if they shoot even in an intruder, it could penetrate into my apartment and I got to deal with it. And we've seen that happen with police shooting into one building and then one apartment and then hitting other apartments. So this makes people in cities think very, very differently about guns. Not to mention they have cops within a few minutes of them, typically, and people who live in rural areas don't. But that's a very difficult challenge. Like you mentioned depleted uranium. Sure. But in a city in general, when, when, like, when the NYPD was coming after this dude who was leaving, I think it was the Empire State Building, he killed his boss or something. They were trying to shoot at him and they missed and shot like seven civilians. Now, that's an issue of these cops not being trained particularly well. Yeah, we talked well. about that earlier. That's very interesting. Yeah. But there, there are more ramifications for living in an extremely densely populated area and having guns. The problem, I think, for these big cities and for even people who say you shouldn't have depleted uranium is, okay, well, then maybe you've got to amend the Constitution first. I understand people might say it's common sense that you shouldn't have depleted uranium, and I don't think people should have depleted uranium bullets. But how do you, rec- how do you reconcile that with a Second Amendment? saying, well, the Founding Fathers never intended. I, I, it says very generally, the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Like you would not want to give people weapons of mass destruction. But they so had that's, them. That's a vague phrase. Well, not really. They couldn't would, carpet bomb cities and stuff. Yes, they could. In the 1700s, they yes, could. Yes, they could. Well, not really the, carpet the, bomb. The, the frigates could have a row oh, of dozens right. of cans yeah, go, boom, 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 And it would just blanket, wipe out these poor Coastal cities. Coastal cities, yeah. Yeah, one ship. And they were private individuals who owned these things. So I think the issue I, I, I have with all of this stuff, when look, take a look at like hate crimes, for instance, it's already illegal. Right. They're now saying like, oh, the capital insurrection, we should make all these things illegal. We should make, we should charge. No, 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 no. We don't need new laws. Enforce the law you already have. If someone takes anything and then kills somebody with it, it's a crime. It's a crime to yeah, kill people. But if someone did sail a boat up on like, what's a good coastal city, Miami? And just a good coast. Yeah, just laid waste to it with artillery fire. And then you're like, oops, That's guess we got to arrest that guy. But in the meantime, 60,000 people were killed by artillery fire. Like, that's a mistake in the law for letting that guy get that weapon. Well, that's a mistake for the Coast Guard not intercepting a destroyer right. with a bunch of but artillery. What if it doesn't it? even look like the destroyer, you know? Well, that, that's just an inherent problem of reality. Like I mentioned, the drones. What's to stop someone from taking a drone, heaven forbid, and then doing something crazy with it? And I warned. I warned uh, 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 people involved with government regulation on drones in 20, 2012 when I said, you need to pay attention to this stuff because someone could take a consumer grade drone and do something insane with it. And if someone's, if someone's standing outside of New York and they fly a drone into the city, it's done. Now, you could argue that it's difficult to come into the city with some kind of weapon, but even then, someone could just walk into New York with a crazy weapon. Yeah. I, lived, I lived in New York when they planted bombs in Jersey City and Manhattan. And that was when I was like, I don't want to live in the city anymore. The yeah. police couldn't stop someone from just carrying in. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a pressure cooker. It was mm-hmm. like a right, you know, whatever. And they, and, they, and they blew it up. So it's not even about drones, to be honest. It's about the fact that people can do these things. It's like I mentioned. A kid can take household chemicals, go into a school, and mix stuff up in a bathroom. And then all of a sudden, people are going to start vomiting and getting sick and potentially die. I keep thinking about mental health. This is whenever I have this conversation, I really get down to it. I'm like, well, it's a mental health issue. If we're kidding, putting kids on like psychoactives and like psychostimulants to, 
to dull their ADD or whatever, and then they they have no friends and they have no love, and then they sure. they think they're in a video game. Yeah, but, I think there's a big problem with that in in modern culture. People want to blame the tool and not the parenting or the decisions that that they make. And if you look at most of the mass shooters, I mean, Adam Lanza, Sandy Hook, you know, the most memorable in in the in the most awful way, obviously. No, no real father figure uh, was taking antidepressants, and that's just a recipe for disaster. And unfortunately, we spend all of our time now looking at how how do we ban the tool that he used, as opposed to looking at okay, how could we have solved that problem before it happened? And same thing with uh, Parkland. I mean, if anybody has read. Uh, I, I would encourage any everybody to read the book Why Meadow Died by uh, Andy Pollack. He was Meadow's father, one of the um, one of the students who was killed in in the Parkland shooting, and he talks about in the book very detailed about how many, just how how much was overlooked. Uh, as far as the the teachers and the schools for this shooter i mean they they knew he was a problem they they tried to get him out of the school but there were a number of policies in florida that they were trying to reintegrate kids with mental problems into a normal school setting and you know they had this kid who was mentally disturbed uh with you know kids who had problems like you know autism or or other disabilities and it just didn't work and, and they knew it didn't work, and they did everything they could uh, to prevent it from, they, they thought that they were doing what everything that they could to prevent it from happening, but what they were really doing was setting things up for disaster. I mean, the, the kid was, I, I, I don't know the, I don't remember the exact policy, but in Broward County, kids were allowed to have two uh, felony, I believe felony convictions per year before they would be removed from the school, and that was a reset every year. So two you could felonies? Have, uh, uh, it, I'm sorry, misdemeanors. No, oh, I was yeah. like, he'd be in prison, so, man. So you'd have a kid with two, you know, a kid could have two misdemeanors as a freshman, two misdemeanors as a sophomore, two misdemeanors as a junior, and they would the kid was still allowed to be in school. So, I mean, yeah, you can look at the, the tool that he used and, and try to demonize that and try to spend all of your time and all this congressional effort trying to ban this, this uh, you know, object. But meanwhile... They, you know, they didn't even get rid of they. They, they were trying to reinstate uh, the sheriff. Uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was just an awful situation. I knew I knew some dude who worked in a lab and he told me he didn't think terrorism was real. And I said, that's a bold and ludicrous statement. Of course, terrorism is real. It's just what do you mean by that? What he said was he didn't think these stories you hear about like these attacks are intended to be mass destruction and chaos to scare the population. Like when we hear about terror overseas, what he was saying was, no, those are just attacks on military installation by military forces against military forces. The idea that they hate us for our freedom or that they're trying to maximize death or scare someone in a small town and thinking they'll be a victim, he didn't think was real simply because he worked in a lab. And he said, there's a chemical that I can buy in bulk for cheap that if you touched, you would get violently ill. And if you got it on your hand, it would seep in your skin and you would die. And he was like, and if you, anyone in this lab, wanted to, you could sprinkle that in, in public, in some, on, a, on a railing, for instance. Mercury, probably. Kill 50,000 people because it goes into your skin, goes into your system, and then kills you. And he's like, it never happens. No one ever does that. And so he's like, you hear these stories about a terror attack on a military, military installation. That what, what they're trying to say is the terror is scaring people into giving in to some political demand. No. These are just people attacking a military installation to target a mil the military, to target a military target. If it was really about scaring people into wearing you know, a mask, then then you would see something particularly insane because there I, I'm not I'm, I'm not, I don't want to I'm not going to repeat the chemical, he, you know, he, he mentioned, but he said there is a, you know, powdery substance that they work with in the labs all the time that they're like, you have to be in full gear and it is it goes into your skin. It kills you. He's like, why aren't why aren't you know, why don't people do these things? Bioterror. It's it's uh, arguably, but like it's always some extremely convoluted and like difficult explode. Like IEDs are more complicated. He was like, like building the explosive is harder than just buying a chemical and sprinkling it somewhere. Right. So he thinks it's more about, you know, what we were seeing overseas was directed military attacks against an adversary, um, adversarial military against us. And the media frames it as terror 
like they're trying to scare civilians. That's not the case. They're not, they're not targeting us here for the most part. The point is, I think people look to guns because they're scary, because it's, it's kind of like a boogeyman, essentially. You mentioned it's the tool. Right. But if you talk to people who own guns, like it, it's crazy to me that I can walk around in, you know, I go, go, you go to a gun shop, everybody's got a gun. Like, am I supposed to be worried about that? Are there they're genuinely people who are scared when they see a guy, a random person with a gun? There was one uh, uh, video I was watching recently where there's a guy in a, in a, in a, in a store and he's got a, a, a gun just holstered on his hip. And there's a woman yelling at him like, oh, my God, he's got a gun. Why? And they're yelling. And other people are like, who cares? Who is this like urban liberal woman shocked to see a regular guy with a weapon? Or there was a there's photos posted by journalists where it's like you'll have a bunch of guys in a store and they'll have like ARs like on their shoulders. And they're like, I can't believe this is America. Like, what are these people doing? And it's like, it's like a normal thing. People walking around with weapons in certain parts of the country. They're shocked by it. They're terrified. But like when the cops do it, I guess now to be honest, they're scared of cops too. And they, they want to get rid of them. But <laughs> my, 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 my position now on the abolish the police thing is like, I don't care. Do it. In fact, more power to you. If you want to vote to abolish police, yeah, do your thing, man. I don't live there. They, they I don't got to worry, that in, worry about in it. Seattle, didn't they? And then they were begging for Minneapolis. The Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Yeah. And then they were yeah. begging for them to come back. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Law enforcement. You know what, man? Send. When uh, what's what's the joke? It's like uh, I, for, I forgot how you phrase it, but you know, in the apocalypse, the people without guns are just collecting food for the people with guns. You know. Yeah, it's funny you say that because it reminds me. I used to watch that show Doomsday Prepper on uh, whatever it was, history, national, yeah. whatever, yeah. whatever channel. And uh, I remember this one episode, there was a woman, um, she was like, you know, 300 pounds, grossly overweight. And she, she was building this prepper community. They had like maybe 10 or 15 people that were all part of it. And they had five years worth of food stored. And she kept saying how they're, they're pacifists. And, you know, we don't have any weapons here. You know, I teach self-defense. And um, they showed a couple clips of her doing her self-defense. None of it was any good. Uh, and you know, <laughs> the I, prepper I, lady. Yeah, I, I mean, as a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, I can say that it was no good. And I just kept thinking to myself, you know, basically, you guys are just collecting food and water for the first group of able-bodied armed men that show up at your place and decide to take your stuff. Yeah. And uh, I, it was, <laughs> it was just, it was mind-boggling how she, she seemed to have thought out every other piece of the pie. But that one was such a, a gaping hole. And like what, you know, you, you're the basically the modern day Quakers, more or less. You know, yeah. you're, you're not going to harm anything. And uh, ultimately, you know, it's, it's crazy, not man. Out for you in, in, in the end. Uh, th these cities are going to be, and I wonder if it's going to be relatively soon, to be honest. There was a, uh, the, the cities are going to be wastelands. You know, the, yeah. the people are going to be eating each other. I don't think the reg regular people understand it. And I think so many. Well, I mean, people look at Houston right now. Houston's grocery stores look like Venezuela, and yeah. they've been without power for a few days. It's a bad ice it's, storm. It's only. I mean, it's, it's not it, even been a week. It's horrible, and, and there's I, no food. Listening to, uh, you know, various podcasts and and radio on the way in, it's all because the truckers can't get in. You know, right. this, this, they can't get in because there's too much snow on the roads, too much ice, and as soon as the trucks stop the cities grind to a halt and <laughs> that's when reality sinks in it's a scary idea man um within a few days these cities are without food what do these people do what happens if right so right now you've got relief you've got aid federal right. government will intervene in some capacity to get food to people people will find their way in but what happens if there was a total collapse not that like people would be dying or anything but just like let's say right now there was a, a disruption of some sort that resulted in the, the trucker supply lines ceasing and the federal government unable or unwilling to intervene. What would a city like New York do within three days? No more food. Food spoils. Food is, is, is consumed. People got to eat every single day. What happens? Like to assume worst case scenario, something like cometary impact, volcanic eruption, global <laughs> catastrophe, and it rains for like 20, for like 100 days straight or 20 days straight or something. Floods, the entire country, everywhere over Earth gets flooded. And the government can't get to every city. It just cannot. The federal government is equipped maybe for one city, maybe. In Houston, it's not even equipped to it's solve that. It's going to be brutal. You can't Look stop at Katrina, the ice. Man. Look at yeah. Katrina. Yeah. The, the floods, you can't stop the floods. You can only try and survive it. And So, let's so say what this, do they do? This is a, if, if, if Look at Houston they, right now. Within not even a week, the food is gone. 
And there, are, and, and, and you know what I love more than anything is that it's a gun state for one thing, right? You've got these liberal liberals, not leftists. Leftists love guns. They're pro 2A. Liberals, these urban corporate pro Democrat liberals are so anti-gun and they're in one of the most vulnerable positions because I'll tell you this, in Chicago, for instance, people got guns. A lot of people got guns. And the people who have the guns are typically not good people. <laughs> they're gangs. Right. And just, you know, they're committing crimes. What would happen if Chicago got cut off? You know, what would happen they if... They would take over. That'd be like the new government. Right. I mean, the I don't... Gangs, I don't, I, right? It'd be like gang warfare for the, the city. The, the gangs essentially operate like governments and to a certain capacity with their territories. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily be that they would take over. They would take. You'd be in your house. Some guy would walk up, break your door open, and you would have no way to protect yourself. It's not easy to get a gun in Illinois. Right. So it's easy for the criminals because they can hop over to Indiana, buy them, bring them in because they don't care about breaking federal law or state law. They just do not care. Now, you, on the other hand, a good law-abiding citizen, you're in trouble now. Within three or four days, there's no food left anywhere. Power goes out, food spoils, roads are shut down, nothing's getting in. Next thing you know, you've got gangs coming to your house and taking what little food you had left. What are you going to do? People are going to get killed. People are going to get robbed. And if you look at, say, like Ukraine, after the fall of the Soviet Union, you want to know what happens when there's a collapse? The people with guns. This is, this is what I was told by my Ukrainian friend. I said, how did the oligarchs become oligarchs? Like these people who just own everything. And she was like, oh, when the Soviet Union collapsed, they just shut the factories with guns and said, we're the boss now. And the workers were like, okay, tell us what to do. The workers were so used to having bosses than the government wow. that when everything got shut down, the guy, the foreman, of the, 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 the guy running the factory is like, who do I answer to? All of a sudden, some random guy shows up who's like 20 with a, with a bunch of goons and they've got weapons. And he's like, don't worry, we'll tell you what to do. We own this place now. They're like, okay. All of a sudden now these people own everything. Sounds like government. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, to exactly. be honest, you know, most people um, are just looking to follow orders of some sort. You know, they want to be told uh, when to go to work, when to go to school, what to do. And, you know, without government, then they'll they'll follow. I mean, look at Mexico. You know, you have basically the government is the cartels. Um, yeah. The cartels tell the government what to do in some cases, and people follow what the car people are more afraid of the cartels than they are of the government. Definitely. I mean, people in America are scared of the cartels. Sure. And the cartels want to make sure you know it. Like, right. I know American journalists who have had to, like, back off of stories. They'll, they'll, they'll write the dumbest, craziest things about the U.S. military and its politicians, and they'll call, you know, the president and politicians the worst names in the world. And then they'll be like, I've got, I received a threat outside my house. A bullet was, was in front of my door because I was reporting on the cartels. And they'll be like, <laughs> well, you hear stories like that. I know some people who are involved in, like, activist community stuff who are like, yeah, we're bowing out. Because the cartels, they're, 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 they're not concerned, you know. Yeah, they, they, don't, they don't have rules. But Luke, Luke is really obsessed with this one part of Mexico. Do you remember what it's called, Lydia? I don't remember. Where they got rid of government? I can never yeah. remember. Yeah, it, I think it's the name of the city starts with Sharon. A, is that what it is? No, I think it starts with an M. I was just looking at it the other yeah. day because I was using that argument with somebody, an yeah. anti-gun person, and I said, you know, look, these people got sick of getting raided by the cartels and having their people killed, and the government wasn't doing anything to stop it, and so. They decided to take it upon themselves and uh, tell the cartels to get the hell out. And they couldn't have done that without being armed. Yep. That's just the, the, the end of it. It's crazy. It's, 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 it's funny when I, 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 I love, I've, I, I've never been throughout my whole life a staunch 2A person, right? Now it's funny because I get messages from people. They're like, it's crazy how far, you know, pro-gun you've gone. And I'm like, well, look, I'm not an absolutist, but I absolutely uh, do think the Constitution is important. And if people disagree with the, the broad language of 2A, you got to change the constitution. You can't just pass these laws like they've been doing, but they do it anyway. So, you know, far be it for me to uh, tell people uh, what, 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 you know, can't happen when it literally happens. You're the aspiring president. But I, but I love arguing with people about guns just because they don't know anything. And so I can be like, listen, I'm more than happy to entertain a conversation about like depleted uranium because that's a serious question. Like if somebody's just walking around with depleted uranium bullets and putting that in the ground, even for target practice, you got serious problems. But that's a, that's a debate that needs to happen. And I think there's some reasonable you know, concerns about things like that, reciprocity, uniformity that we need to deal with in this country where sure. the states don't have, you know, what if somebody wants to drive across state I lines? I mean, you know, and that's a, a problem in, in the gun community as well. And I'll admit that I sometimes get uh, trapped in those discussions where 
you know, you, you get you get trapped in these discussions about the fringes. Well, what hap- you know, what do you think about rocket launchers? What do you think about grenades? What do you think about deple- depleted uranium, et cetera? And it's like we can argue about that all day long, but there's so many things that are that are banned that really make no sense. Okay, so like an M1A. Yeah, like an M1A. Or for example, um, you can have an AR-15 with a barrel that's 16 inches long, but if it's 15.9 inches long, you're a felon. You go to you go to prison. <laughs> and not only that, if you own an AR-15 with a 16 inch barrel, and you also own an AR-15 barrel that's only 10 inches long because you're going to build a pistol out of it in a configuration that would be legally allowable. There have been people that have been charged by the ATF for constructive possession because they said, well, you owned a an, an AR-15 with a 16-inch barrel, but you also had this 10-and-a-half-inch barrel, so theoretically you could have constructed an AR-15 that's insane. in an illegal configuration, so we're going to c- charge you with constructive possession. So, I mean, it's like who you know who decided that 16 inches was the right length why not 15 why not 14 right. why not 18 right who who decided that number well it was decided by the national firearms act of 1934 and we have never had a discussion about that ever since thanks for checking out this clip from the timcast irl podcast if you want to see the full show come back to this channel youtube.com slash timcast irl monday through friday at 8 p.m where you can leave comments and super chat and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members-only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.